Hello, I'm Dennis Smith. Welcome to Exposure. March 1993 saw one of the most bizarre weather episodes in recent memory. Now, there's nothing unusual about snow in March, but you gotta admit, there is something unusual about a blizzard in Birmingham in March. Across the eastern U.S., along with the snow came tornadoes and coastal flooding. It was all caused by Superstorm 93. Across Texas, Louisiana, and Mississippi, the winter storm of 93 began as rain, thunder, snow, and sleet. By storm's end, over 230 people would lose their lives. The impact would be felt from Cuba to Canada. Earlier that week, even before people saw the first effects, forecasters identified the ingredients that would create this super storm. Primarily, there were three things. One, a very big, late season arctic outbreak plunging down pretty much right over the north pole and down into the lower 48 of the united states second ingredient was warm humid air lurking over the gulf of mexico florida and the gulf stream and the warm waters themselves and last but not least very uh, big dip in the jet stream a couple disturbances helping carve that out and that created this immense cluster of thunderstorms over the gulf of mexico and once that happened the, everything just went crazy this one had everything, everything came together perfectly, and the rest is history. But it's not going to be a two or three day event. It won't have to be. It's going to go down in the record book. Bet on that. In the Gulf of Mexico, winds increased to hurricane force. Water began to batter the coastline of northwestern Florida. It's another, about another hour before it's high tide, so you know we're going to have some water down here. By early morning, the storm surge reached 10 feet in places. The beach communities of Taylor and Dixie counties were caught by surprise. Absolute horror is all I can tell you. We did not get enough warning, and nobody realized it would be this bad. If we knew there was going to be flooding, we would have left. And I kept thinking it was going to let up, let up. But it never let up. It just kept coming. Well, I watched my house fold pieces at the time, and I was standing on the back deck. And when the back deck went to fall in, that's when I got off of it. And there wasn't no fight. We just wham with it and let it carry us till we got to where we touched ground. Waves and debris crushed homes, tossed cars, and destroyed lives. And I was so scared, and I was praying, and I was praying and praying and praying, and I'd fall on my knees, and I started hearing people scream for help. And I, there was a gentleman, the first one, that come through between the firehouse out there and the house, and I was in that bedroom window right up there. And I had my window open at that time because it was coming mostly from this direction. And I said, honey, hold on to something. And he said, oh, God, somebody help me. And I screamed as loud as I could scream. And I said, grab something and hang on. And he, I never did hear another word from him. They found him under that debris pile out there and it lost his life. Nine other residents in the beach communities lost their lives during the storm. For many people, the water rose so fast, escape was impossible. When we came out to walk out, the car was floating. No, the truck had already drifted off, and uh, we just decided... The I boat told her, was gone, everything was We'd better going. Stay, just stay here. In just a few minutes, uh, front part of the old trailer began to just disintegrate. Ray and Lucy Bailey, in their 80s, managed to hang on to this palm tree for four hours, their heads just above water. They were finally rescued by neighbors. It, it was uh, hard work to stay in that tree. I think a desire to live had a lot to do with it. Within hours, the water was gone, and so were entire rows of houses. In Dixie and Taylor counties, over 500 structures were destroyed. Another 500 were damaged. Although the forecast for the storm was accurate, emergency management officials were surprised by the magnitude of the tidal surge and the destructive power of the winds. We uh, believe that the storm was underestimated, the, uh, the flooding part of the storm. I think people were aware we were going to have some severe weather primarily tornadoes, things of that nature, but the, the flooding, the 
title surge, we believe, was underestimated. And these are things that we need to work on. So we do have that lead time to, to move people out of the, uh, the, the low-lying areas uh, so we're not impacted with the flooding. How did the storm create such a large surge? As the low-pressure system intensified in the Gulf of Mexico, the winds ahead of the storm strengthened out of the south. This may have helped pile water up into the northeastern gulf. Strong westerly winds then swept in to create the main storm surge, which reached 9 to 12 feet in places. This was rather unprecedented now. You have to remember in its scope, it's almost unheard of to get that kind of a storm surge from a storm in the Gulf of Mexico in a non-tropical system, and that's what this was. The storm threatened lives at sea as well as on land. The Coast Guard rescued over 160 people from the swirling seas. As wind and water hammered Florida's northwest Gulf Coast, other areas of the state were being pounded by a tremendous line of severe storms. Trees and power lines fell from Tallahassee to West Palm Beach. Ironically, a tornado touched down in Dade County, destroying one of the tent cities built to house those who had lost everything to Hurricane Andrew. We actually observed the funnel cloud just above us. And once I got my heart out of my mouth and looked out the window, we saw that the tents were just blowing away. And we literally lost 24 tents right then within a matter of minutes. All residents were evacuated. Later, they returned to find their temporary homes demolished. A terrible experience. It was a heartbreaking experience to see the little, the little things that I save and I have with my kids, my five kids, I lose everything again. And I had to start all over again, fresh. Like those inflicted by Hurricane Andrew, the scars from this storm will not easily heal. I relive it when I go to bed. Of the people that lost their life, and I can't help but blame myself because I couldn't get to them. But God was merciful, and he saved my life. Part two of our story, When Exposures Continue. senses in Florida. Frantically planning a Florida vacation? Relax! The Gulf Coast of Florida already has a perfect plan. First, sun yourself on the beautiful beaches of St. Petersburg Clearwater. Second, fun yourself at nearby Bush Gardens in Tampa Bay. It's the perfect sun and fun Florida vacation plan. Yours, call today. It's surprising, but true. With Hewlett Packard's real life imaging system, the print quality of HP's new DeskJet 600 series printers for the home is so good that it's sometimes hard to know the difference between what's real and what's just really well printed. It's out there, waiting on your steps, your sidewalk, your driveway. It laughs at rock salt. It's ice. It fears only heat. Prestone introduces new driveway heat. Each concentrated pellet heats up like a furnace to melt up to four times more ice than rock salt with no messy residue. Put your driveway in the Prestone zone with new driveway heat and kiss your ice goodbye. New Prestone driveway heat melts up to four times more ice than rock salt. Pills take time to dissolve, but the effervescent power of Alka-Seltzer Plus cold medicine is ready the moment you take it to relieve your worst cold symptoms. Today I'd like to talk... Nothing rushes relief like Alka-Seltzer Plus. Okay, let's meet a Red Lobster in an hour. Red Lobster! This holiday season, the place to meet is Red Lobster where for a short time you can enjoy our ultimate feast with all your favorites on one plate. 
succulent rock lobster, roasted shrimp, tender snow crab, and large golden fried shrimp. It's the ultimate feast, but hurry, it ends soon. Happy holidays from Red Lobster. And for your holiday parties, enjoy party platters to go. Red Lobster, for the seafood lover in you. 1995 Year in Review, this week in the Weatherscope Focus. Watch the next Weatherscope only on the Weather Channel. came on shore during the course of the night on the panhandle of Florida then moved northeast across Georgia. At the same time, there's some very cold air coming in in the upper part of the atmosphere. The combination of the two caused heavy snow to begin falling across many places uh, that Friday night and that Saturday morning. It howled northward from the Gulf of Mexico and into the deep south. Residents at first looked forward to a nice dusting of snow just in time for the weekend. But soon their joyous anticipation was replaced by the shock of a deadly blizzard, in some places like none that had been seen in more than a hundred years. The weight of ice and snow fell trees, which blocked roads and downed power lines over much of the southeast. Who'd believe a little bit of snow caused this much trouble? For these folks in Atlanta, falling trees created a more immediate danger than loss of power. Trees came crashing down on their house. I just heard this loud thud, and Bill was in the, one of the back rooms working, and I heard him scream, oh my gosh, and I knew something was wrong then. Motorists in the south, unaccustomed to driving in even minor snowstorms, were caught off guard by the blizzard. This tow truck operator was waiting for a truck to tow him out when a camera crew arrived. What are you going to have to do? Let's call a worker for a worker. 75 was closed at the Tennessee-Georgia line for days. Northbound vehicles backed up for more than 80 miles. You gotta go back south and shut down. Should be open sometime late this evening. Many travelers were students heading back from spring break in Florida, out of food and money, forced to turn back to the south. Emergency vehicles fared no better than others. Delays in transit meant that many fires, which in normal weather might have been quickly doused, burned out of control. Much of the property damage in the south was caused by the snow itself. Buildings which were not designed to carry the load wilted under the weight of the snow and ice. While the center of the surface flow pressure system was still in Georgia, heavy snow was breaking out hundreds of miles in advance of the center of the low. So you did have heavy snowfall rates covering much of the eastern seaboard at the same time. An amateur photographer grabbed these dramatic shots of a pier on Surfside Beach, South Carolina. It was battered by waves for hours, and finally, it gave way. had a very strong surge of wind coming around the bottom of the storm from the south and west. And it was this surge of wind which contributed to all the wild weather in Florida, and then also caused the extremely strong winds along the South Carolina coast. As the storm moved up the coast, these winds continued. Just south of New York, on the Jersey shore, the town of Seabright braced for the oncoming killer storm. The isthmus on which Seabright sits is but 100 yards wide. It separates the Shrewsbury River from the raging Atlantic. And when the blizzard came through, the ocean poured over the seawall, across the isthmus, and into the river, flooding the town. This woman was trying to get to her boyfriend's house. She was rescued by a New York area television news crew, which found her surrounded by a rising tide of ice and water. National Guard troops evacuated most of Seabright's 1,800 residents. It's getting to be a routine. The town has taken several beatings by the weather in recent years. Last December, a nor'easter drove the ocean higher than did the March blizzard. The brunt of snowfall in the blizzard was up the spine of the Appalachian and across Pennsylvania. 
As in the south, roads, power lines, and buildings were impacted. The surface low pressure moved into upstate New York, an area where heavy snowfall is common, but not this heavy. Even in Syracuse, the storm set a record for snowfall in a single storm at well over 40 inches. In New York City, residents dug their way out quickly, but freezing temperatures made road clearing more difficult than usual. Airports in New York were typical of those from Florida to Maine. As the blizzard came through, many airports closed, and most flights were either canceled or delayed. As the storm moved up the coast of New England, the same winds that swept the Carolinas and New Jersey whipped the sea up to ominous levels. The residents were expecting the worst, but a last-minute shift in wind direction just before a high tide reduced the coastal flooding. For Mainers, the storm only amounted to a bit more inconvenience than the average winter storm. From Maine, the storm headed up the Canadian coast and out into the North Atlantic, leaving behind a swath of destruction covering the entire eastern third of the U.S. Coming up, the conclusion of our story when exposures continue. Ready? My dad wants to talk to you. Before you take my daughter out on a night like this, there's one thing I need to know. Yes, sir? Do you have an Exide battery in that car? Um... You know, son, an Exide battery was Admiral Byrd's only source of power on his expedition to Antarctica. Dad! Hey, talk about cool! Exide! Exide, the world leader in batteries. I don't have one reason you should try Citrusel Fiber Therapy. I have hundreds. From Michigan, a woman writes, My husband and I have used Metamucil and Citrusel. We like Citrusel. From Selmer, Tennessee, Thank you for Citrusel. I will never use anything else. Citrusel is different, like the fact that other powdered bulk fibers contain psyllium, which can cause excess gas. But Citrusel's fiber is as effective without producing gas. Try Citrusel. Effective relief without the gas. Shelly, you need some medicine for that cold. Shelly? Shelly? Shelly, it'll make you feel better. It's Dimetap Elixir. And it's your favorite flavor, grape. Dimetap, the number one doctor-recommended brand for colds. Doctors know a medicine can't work if your child won't take it. Doctors say Dimetap for good reason. And for colds with coughs, try Dimetap DM. Want your toilet really clean? Pour in Clorox bleach after every flush. Or better yet, drop Clorox automatic toilet cleaner in your tank. It cleans with the power of Clorox bleach every time you flush. Clorox automatic. January 28th, in a special live broadcast, after the Super Bowl, you're invited to see a winning tradition continue. Marianne, you've just won $10 million from Publishers Clearinghouse. <laughs> Be a part of something magical as it happens. January 28th, watch who wins this year's $10 million from Publishers Turning House, live as it's happening after the Super Bowl. Better yet, enter now, and the winner could be you. Witness firsthand the most active hurricane season in 62 years. Watch Hurricanes 95 Season on Edge, Christmas Day at 1 Eastern. Dr. Brooke Fishoff is a psychologist at the Carnegie Mellon University. He studies why people take risks and how they make decisions. Well, one of the things that's particularly surprising about this storm is that the weather forecasters said with such great confidence that this storm was coming. We're not kidding this time. So when they promised us a big storm, there was some percentage of us who said, well, this is just like other promises in the past. I've got important things to do. Or I'll probably be able to get through. Of course, they're unhappy, when, maybe, you know, they may be unhappy or worse, when things don't, don't work out and it's easy for us to criticize them in, uh, in, in, in hindsight. So, so conceivably those are, rational, you know, those are rational decisions, it's just hard to see the rationality when they haven't worked out. Travis Archer was a victim of this storm. He loved fast cars and 4 by 4s Friday night of the storm, he and seven of his friends set out in two jeeps for the North Georgia mountains. Travis did not return. Gary Davenport, Travis's brother-in-law, was part of that tragic outing. 
He's a hunter, outdoorsman, trained in survival. We're all ready to go. Something to do. You don't see snow that much around here when you hear something like that. You want to go play in it. It wasn't so bad until we turned off on a little deep road. There's one little, that's the one we got stuck on. Trees was just, they were falling over the road and we had an axe, we'd get out and chop them in there and, and go on. When the first jeep got stuck, all eight people got into the second one and tried to turn back. The huge trees blocked the dirt road and they were stranded. You could hear trees popping. Wind. It's getting worse, I can tell. Saturday at daylight, with the blizzard still raging, Travis Archer and Bobby Hobbs decided to walk for help. Sunday morning was even colder than Saturday. With no heat in the Jeep, they were desperate. The group decided they had to walk out. I had on a pair of tennis shoes. I had a pretty good pair of bricks that had a line around and on a t-shirt and a thing that snow was above your knees and my legs was numb. I knees down there was numb. My hands, after I got dry, my hands were all right because I kept them in my pocket. And it, it was painful until it just got numb and you couldn't feel it. They were rescued Sunday evening all but Travis Archer. Travis had frozen to death Saturday night while he and Bobby Hobbs slept in the open. Obviously, each death is its own tragedy and it has its own story. I think there are perhaps a number of things about this particular storm that may have caught people uh, un unawares. I think one is that the sheer magnitude of the, of, of the storm was such, was out, think outside of many people's experience. Think about the category of event that you're dealing with and say, gee, if this is something that I don't have a lot of first-hand experience with or haven't been trained in, there are likely to be some surprises hidden here. I don't know what those surprises are, but there are likely to, to be some. So if somebody tells you there's the storm of the century and you're less than a century old, then presumably there are some surprises hidden here and you probably ought to adopt a generally cautious policy. Gary Davenport learned that lesson. Not to go out playing in it and it's going to be a dangerous snow. You, know. you never do know what can happen. Just, I'd call all my friends who's got four-wheel drive and tell them to stay in the house for one. And it, can, it can get dangerous quick. <laughs> The superstorm of 93 was beyond most of our experience. Few have ever seen anything like it, and it didn't end when the sun came out Sunday, March 14th. There was enough moisture in the snow that fell in this storm to fill the Mississippi River for 40 days. And when the snow melted, the runoff swamped towns and cities all along the eastern seaboard. Floodwaters forced residents out of their homes from West Virginia to Massachusetts. It was the fourth largest catastrophe in the U.S. in terms of insured damage. Some estimate the total damage will be from three and a half to four billion dollars. And the death toll was higher than in any weather disaster in this country for almost 20 years. 26 states were hit. It affected more than 50% of the nation's population. It joins the ranks of the storms of legend, storms we tell our children and our children's children about, like the blizzard of 88, the hurricane of 35, the superstorm of 93. Blizzards, freezing temperatures, coastal flooding, all caused by the same storm system. Those of us who witnessed Superstorm 93 will certainly not soon forget it. We hope you enjoyed this edition of Exposures. I'm Dennis Smith.
Has there ever been a storm to compare? From Florida all the way up the East Coast, a strange storm system spawned tornadoes and dumped tons of snow from the Northeast to the Deep South. Superstorm 93, now for your video library. A 45-minute video memory you'll want to share with your family for years to come. See the Weather Channel exploration of the storm's unusual meteorology. Why the death toll was so surprisingly high. Plus, what happened in communities that found themselves in the storm-ravaged path? Incredible scenes of the deadly storm surge. Winter destruction that denied life-saving aid. The unforgettable story of Superstorm 93 can now be yours for only $14.95. Order this remarkable edition to your home video library collection now. Charge by phone by calling 1-800-626-9477 and have your credit card ready. Or you can send a check or money order to the address shown on your screen. But for faster...